1560 is an important year, not only for the story of the Sengoku Jidai, Japan's age of warring clans, but also for Japanese history as a whole. What I mean by this is that the year 1560 marked a turning point during the chaos of the Sengoku period, a turning point which would alter the trajectory of the era. Ever since the outbreak of the Onin War in 1467, military governors, the daimyo, from across Japan had risen up due to the weakness of the Ashikaga shogunate and the central government. This allowed them to venture forth, to conquer their neighbors, and increase their power and sphere of influence. Thus, for the 93 years between 1467 and 1560, Japan was engulfed in the flames of war, and only one lord, one man, had risen up to potentially bring an end to this age of strife, Imagawa Yoshimoto. However, as we know, in that very year of 1560, Yoshimoto failed. He was cut down at Okehazama by the most unlikely of rivals, Oda Nobunaga. And in the years to come, the legend of Nobunaga is set to rise, as Yoshimoto's ambition would soon pass to him. The dream of unifying the country and bringing an end to the chaos would in time become Nobunaga's reality. Yet before we move on to the age of ambition, let us first take a look back and recap the events from the early years of the Warring States period, the first phase of the Sengoku Jidai series. Episode 1 picked up right after the end of the Setting the Stage series, with the stage now set for the eruption of the Sengoku Jidai. We learned how the once powerful Ashikaga Shogunate had deteriorated, causing many samurai military land governors to grow ambitious, becoming the first daimyo. Episode 2 saw the outbreak of the Onin War, when Shogun Ashikaga Yoshimasa needed an heir to inherit his title. He looked to his brother, yet the unexpected birth of a true son would cause factions to form and a new war to begin. Episode 3 saw the birth of the Iko Iki, militant Pure Land Buddhist monks following the Jodo Shinshu faith. Their numbers would swell during the years of the Onin War, leading to the establishment of the temple fortress, Ishiyama Hongonji. Also, the Onin War would come to an end in 1477, yet the damage caused by the war would allow for endless fighting between the daimyo. Thus, the Sengoku Jidai had truly begun. In episode 4, we were introduced to the concept of Gekokujo, which means the lower top of the higher. This would play a large role throughout the period as lower ranking samurai could usurp power from their lords. A prime example of this being Issei Shinkuro, who would pave the way for the establishment of the new Hojo clan. Episode 5 took us to western Japan, as the Ochi, Otomo, and Amago feuded over the land. However, we would also bear witness to the rise of the Mori clan. Episode 6 was the breaking point for many great powers, as the Hosokawa, Shimazu, and Uesugi clans all shattered apart due to infighting and revolt. Episode 7 returned to the new Hojo clan as they began pushing into the Kanto region, seizing territory in Musashi province yet falling victim to a surprise attack by the Satomi clan, which burnt the city of Kamakura to the ground. Episode 8 introduced us to one of the great iconic figures of the Sengoku Jidai, Takeda Shingen, who would fight and win his first battle at Unokuchi in 1536. However, we would also meet his father, Takeda Nobutora, who would later be seen as a great discredit to the Takeda lineage. Episode 9 showed us the first battle of Konodai, where the Hojo would defeat a Satomi Ashikaga alliance, cementing their position as a great clan. Episode 10 would take us back to the west, as a new struggle arose between the powerful Amago clan and the Mori clan, leading to the siege of the Mori power base, Yoshida Koriyama Castle. However, the Ochi would arrive just in time to save the Mori and allow for the two of them to march against the Amago Citadel of Gasan Toda. Yet they would both be delivered a crushing defeat by the Amago, causing the Ochi Damyo, Ochi Yoshitaka, to forsake war. 
Episode 11 saw the introduction of Europeans in Japan, as the Portuguese would arrive off the coast of Kyushu in 1543, bringing with them new firearms and Christianity. Episode 12 brought many changes to the east, such as Takeda Shingen usurping his father and taking control of the Takeda clan, the Hojo clan destroying the Ogegeyatsu Uesugi clan and reigning supreme over Kanto, and the introduction of Uesugi Kenshin, who would strategically unite the fractured Uesugi clan back into one unified force. Episode 13 saw the disintegration of the Hosokawa clan, before turning to Ochi Yoshitaka, who would be assassinated by his militant retainer, Sue Harukata, who would go on to puppet the Ochi clan, while inevitably coming into conflict with the Mori clan, led by Mori Motonari. Motonari would then lure him to the island of Miyajima, where Harukata would be surrounded and destroyed, allowing the Mori clan to seize the majority of the remaining Ochi territory and become a great clan in the west. Episode 14 took us to Owari province, which, after the death of the patriarch Oda Nobuhide, would plunge the Oda clan into civil war, finally being united in 1558 by Oda Nobunaga. Episode 15 showcased Takeda Shingen's invasion of Shinano, succeeding in capturing the majority of the province before Uesugi Kenshin, feeling threatened, would ride south to halt the Takeda advance. In episode 16, the war for Kawanakajima began, as Shingen and Kenshin fought three battles over the course of five years for dominance of the plane, with Kenshin narrowly holding Shingen at bay. Episode 17 would take us to that great turning point, as Imagawa Yoshimoto would decide to march on the capital Kyoto, perhaps in aims to bring an end to the Sengoku Jidai, yet he would be surprisingly crushed by Oda Nobunaga before his march had really even begun. And finally, episode 18, which took place after the fateful year of 1560, closed out the Kawanakajima conflict, most notably showcasing the legendary fourth battle of Kawanakajima, which would go down in history as one of feudal Japan's most romanticized battles, while in reality, it would be one of, if not the most bloody battle of the period. So there you have a brief recap of the events of the Sengoku Jidai thus far. We have traveled a long way and covered much ground, yet there is so much more to come, as now we move into the real meat of the period, as great heroes will rise and others will fall. The age of senseless violence is coming to an end. Now begin the first steps towards unification. Now begin the glory days of the Oda clan. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your continued support.